The TFL Off-Road Ineos Grenadier Series is brought to you by Magna, makers of high-quality technology and parts for the next generation of cars and trucks, including the Grenadier. Hey guys, welcome to part three of our Ineos Grenadier Series, and in the last episode, as you recall, we did a little bit of snow wheeling, and I promised you guys that we were going to compare the Ineos to a vehicle that sort of kind of compares. So today, Nathan, what do we got? We've got a brand new Toyota 4Runner, and this is a four-door, four-wheel drive vehicle. It does have at least one solid axle, and it is one of the most capable vehicles in this class. And Tommy, where are we at and what are we doing? Well, we got a good trail out here in Moab, Utah, Thins and Things, and we're gonna compare both of them out on the Slick Rock and find which one is better. Now folks, if you want to see the entire Grenadier series live, it's all up on Patreon right now, or you can wait till next week when another video goes live up on YouTube, but for our super fans out there, check out Patreon for all of uh, the Grenadier coverage. Hey Nathan, how much is that uh, 400 TRD Pro you're uh, rocking? Like 30, uh, maybe 20. <laughs> really? I thought it was 55. It's, it's really expensive, but it's not as expensive as yours. You're right, Nathan. Yeah, this Grenadier, as equipped, is right around 80 grand. Now, they start at 71, but this one with the lockers and the rock rails and the diamond plating on the hood is 80. So there's quite a price difference between these two. And we're going to find out today, do we see that difference manifest in terms of capability? Well, I will say this. Your vehicle looks actually pretty damn good going up and over obstacles. I just fear that mine may be better. Well, let me ask you this, Nathan. Uh, do you have a front locker? No, but I have goodwill. Do you have uh, rock rail? I think I have a really thick frame. Do you have 1,500 pounds of payload? It depends on your perspective. <laughs> do you have a single turbo BMW straight six powertrain? Ah, uh, no, I don't. I actually have a four liter V6. However, my four liter V6 is known for being one of the most reliable engines on the planet, it actually has cured diseases. All right, well, we're gonna really put these vehicles through some interesting tests today and find out, you know, how does a Grenadier stack up to one of the most established, most reliable, longest lived vehicles on the road today. Now, if you're thinking, gee whiz, that looks like an old school Defender, well, that's that's not a coincidence. So, Ineos was founded by a guy named Sir Jim Ratcliffe in the UK, and when Landover discontinued the Defender, he was a huge fan. He asked them if he could buy the rights to continue building it, and Landover said, uh, no. So he's like, well, I'm just gonna go do it myself. And he did. There was a bit of a lawsuit, but he ultimately won, and this is a vehicle for sale right now here in the US. And it's about as old school as it gets. Solid front axle, steel wheels from the factory, available snorkel. These are rails that you can configure to have panels so you can like, you know, slot in jerry cans and that kind of thing. Obviously, we got the two-tone, which is the way to get it. You've got these fantastic grab handles up on the roof. We spec ours with the rock sliders as well. Solid rear axle, front and rear locking differentials are available, which we got. And then out back, it's just typical old school four wheel drive. We've got a split opening rear end, just like that. We got toe points on the back and we got tons of skid plates underneath. This should be on paper everything you need for a proper old school four wheel drive. The roof panel on the Grenadier is specced with switches. Just like an Airbus, they are fantastically satisfying to use. We've got all sorts of auxiliary switches. You can actually spec a bunch more. And over here we've got our front and rear locking differential along with an off-road mode which shuts off stuff like the seat belt beeping. How fantastic is that? And even a waiting mode. This vehicle can wade up to 31 and a half inches of water. And then we've got some downhill assistance here, ESC off. You've got manual leveling for the headlights, and then up front here, just some more interior light controls. But the coolest part of this interior is actually down here, where you're going to find a mechanical activation of the transfer case. Full-time four-wheel drive with a center locker, and then this is the worst part of the interior. It has a BMW powertrain, and they kept the BMW shifter. Like, at least reskin it. That completely doesn't fit in here. Magna is a global automotive engineering and manufacturing giant, and one of the key parts partners in the Ineos Grenadier. You want to build and manufacture a 4x4 from scratch? Magna can do it. Let me show you what they did on our Grenadier. 
On the Grenadier, Magna was tasked with developing the best, most reliable off-road suspension they could. Magna considered leaf springs and air suspension, but their testing and research led them to a four-corner coil suspension as the best all-around off-road suspension system. The Grenadier uses an overbuilt control arm setup for fore and aft stability, and it uses a really beefy pan hard for lateral stability. Rear coils feature gigantic bump stops, almost a signature feature for the Magna rear suspension. To find out more about what Magna is doing with Ineos and a bunch of other global automotive brands, be sure to click the link in the description below. Before I get started, can we all just take a moment and appreciate the fact that Tommy started with Gee Whiz? Now, if you're thinking Gee Whiz, <laughs> okay, golly, let's talk about this, a vehicle that you guys very well know. And this is an established platform that has been around for a very long time based on tech that actually goes back two generations. And we're talking about the four liter V6, of course, in the five speed automatic transmission. This does not have a front locker, but you can lock up the rear and it does have one of the better crawl control systems out there. Articulation is quite good, especially out back, and it does have what I consider to be a very effective armor system underneath, but there are no rock sliders. But I wanted to show you one thing that this has that the Ineos does not have. This is really important because see, some of you guys actually do things for a living, like, I don't know, by wood or by large components. Now, let's say, you had to haul those things. You could put these seats down, right? And you could actually have this tailgate open legally and you can drive around. If you really wanted to, you could lower this glass down. So you don't have those doors that pop out. You can't really drive with those doors open, right? Tire hanging off here and all that. You lower this glass, have a large thing hanging out here, better utility. So essentially speaking, they bought an $80,000 off-road toy where this is a $55-ish thousand dollar utility vehicle. So I took this off-road uh, in Colorado. What's it like to off-road it in Utah? The first thing you notice, which is just such a refreshing aspect of the Grenadier, is the visibility. So many modern vehicles have low roofs, high hoods, and then they've got all this crap on hoods now, like scoops and flares and all this dumb stuff that looks great on the outside. And then you get in the thing and it feels like you're sitting in a bunker. This thing has huge windows, both in the front and on the side. I mean, look look how low the belt line is. You can really see everything around this vehicle. Yeah, I mean, everything's vertical. It's, just, it's straight lines. It's intersecting, square-jawed, design it's really cool the mirrors are too small um, <laughs> you really can't see much of your rear wheel even if you position them right in the mirrors the next thing I'm noticing dad is the steering in this vehicle so on the road it is slow steering it's wandery and it just doesn't give you much feedback but out here on the trail that slow steering means that fine steering inputs are super easy you're not worried about the wheel sawing back at you if you hit a rock it's just a fantastic steering setup for a crawling situation. So what makes it bad on-road makes it great off-road. Yeah, I mean, people either love or hate solid axles, but there's no denying when you go off-road, solid axles just rule the roost. They do. Well, one thing I am also noticing, and we're going to find this out later in the trail, one of the advantages of a front axle is supposed to be articulation, meaning that your front wheels are going to have a better chance of remaining in contact with the ground. This vehicle, I think, could really use a front sway bar disconnect because I really feel that sway bar fighting the front end, not giving you the articulation you really need. The aftermarket will solve that, but that should be from the factory, like a Wrangler has or a, or a Bronco. And how about that ultimate driving machine, six cylinder turbo? Well, you know, people are really skeptical of this engine. Yeah. And a lot of comments I've read said they would have been much better off using like a Toyota engine instead of a B58 BMW engine. But here's the thing, this engine is used in a Toyota, and I've talked to the Toyota folks who worked on the Supra, and they put this engine through the same reliable reliability testing that they run their own engines through. This is a solid unit. They use this thing in just about every BMW from the X5 to the 3 Series, I mean, across the gamut, and the Toyota engineers spoke really highly of it, so um, I'm actually kind of digging it. All you right, know? We're, we're about to hit the, hit the chin scratcher here, so this is a good test of approach and departure, so let's see if it passes or fails. Let's see how it compares to the Forerunner TRD Pro. The total 
length in these vehicles is pretty similar, like 191 inches. Whoa! What do we hit on? The front skid plate. Or is it the bumper case? It uh, looks like skid. Interesting. Wow, we hit the front skid plate. I'm not expecting that. First time we used a bash plate. Now the rear is fine. This vehicle is a longer wheelbase, even though the total length is very similar between the two, so I was not expecting that. Nathan, we hit our front bash plate. It does stick down pretty low. That is a... Why don't you just take a $50 bill and throw it out the window every time that happens? <laughs> yeah, I really don't think there's many challenges out here for this thing. Unless, of course, I drive like an idiot. That changes everything. But yeah, for instance, this, I don't think I'll hit the plate. I might. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's that hitch I was talking about. Barely a scratch. All right, so we got a little articulation challenge here, and I think I'm gonna to have to admit I was wrong from earlier because I was saying the front end doesn't articulate very well, but we were out here in the Tacoma earlier today, the 2024, had that wheel up in the air, and Nathan and I were able to rock the car, but this is pretty much touching, even at this max articulation point. Dad, can you drive out of this? Oh yeah. Yep, so we were fully maxed out, but you know, we just got a little bit of slip, so the wheels were still more or less on the ground. Let's see how the Forerunner compares. All right, that looks good, Nathan. Nathan's in the same spot in the TRD Pro Forerunner. Of course, this has solder axle independent front suspension. We're also in four low with the diffs unlocked. Nathan, let's see if you can drive out of it. All right, so interesting result. You can stop there. So clearly, folks, what we got going on here is the Ineos Granted, the wheelbase comes into play as well, but we were in a better position in the Ineos. Nathan, push that A-Track button, oh, actually. -track? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do A-Track. Let's see if A-Track can get you out of here. That's advanced traction control. Is it on? Uh, there it, it is. Yeah, A-Track. Yep. Okay, now give it one more try. Oh. Yeah. Ah. So A-Track is a very underused feature in the Toyota community. Everyone goes right for the locker, but A-Track will do a lot of what you need to do without ever have to worry about having that rear end locked up. Pretty cool. This video is brought to you by our friends over at Onyx Off-Road, our go-to off-road trail navigation software. It's an app on your phone. You can download trails ahead of time, so when you're offline, you still know exactly where you're at, and it even integrates into Apple CarPlay, so you can display it on the main screen. How cool is that? Check the link below for more info. All right, I'm using the Ineos Hill Descent Control. So you can adjust the speed of the hill descent control, but it feels even a little fast when I slow it down. This is where you feel the weight of the vehicle, which is 5,800 pounds! And it's just dragging me down that hill. I had very little control there compared to what Nathan is going to have in that Forerunner, and I was full on the brake. Let's see what happens on the departure angle. Well, it was just about, just about perfect. Now, of course, we don't have the hitch on our Ineos. Nathan, of course, does have a hitch on that foreigner. This is the hill descent control. I'm slowing it down here, which I believe it can do with the hill descent control, or the tri uh, cruise control, but still a little quick for some of those kind of more technical obstacles. All right, we did it in the Ineos. Yeah. The brakes are still touchy on these things, I gotta tell you. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. No problems. <laughs> Akio Toyota, I am really, really sorry. And blame Roman because he put me on this line. Here's the difference right there. <laughs> First, that was on his hitch. 
Um, we don't have a hitch in our granite here because we figured we wouldn't go with it. Uh, but still, I think even if that hitch wasn't there, you'd probably hit it. It's interesting. I mean, this thing kind of thrusts you through the hills because there's a really high idle, or at least it feels that way. And it just wants to keep accelerating through it. I'm, I haven't touched the accelerator at all. It's just it's kind of lunging a little bit. But I think that's kind of the character of this powertrain. Now we got One Tree Hill. So this is a super steep ascent with an articulated section, and it'll be a great test of articulation, of course, but also traction aids. Now, this vehicle does have a center locker, which I have engaged in low range, and we're gonna try to crawl it as slow as possible, as fast as necessary, as the Land Rover folks say. Ooh, probably shouldn't say Land Rover in this vehicle, um, but uh, we're gonna try that, and then maybe we'll have an opportunity to try a locking diff. And if we mess it all up, we're going right into a tree with our brand new $80,000 vehicle that we just bought. So let's not, let's not do that. So I'm taking it nice and slow. Maybe we can do it without lockers. Okay. It's time to click on a locking diff, which is up here. Let me try my rear. It's blinking. Let me just try crawling it forward, maybe it'll engage. Which it did. Still stuck. Let me try my front locking diff. I'm gonna... There it goes, could feel it lock. Oh yes, double lockers, baby. Woo! So it, it was a little finicky. The rear one kicked out right away. The front one had to keep stabbing at it. But uh, we did it, folks. That's a wrap. Let's see if I can turn them off now. Okay, now they're blinking. Diff locks disengaging. Still blinking. Oh, man. Yeah, this is one thing I've heard some folks complain about is getting the, getting the lockers to kick out is uh, a bit of a process. Still, They're still trying to disengage. Backing up. All right, well, we're still triple locked, which is not what I want to be in, but we'll drive a little bit and maybe they'll finally decide they don't want to be on anymore. It's a little bit of a pain. All right, Nathan, come on up. Are you going to lock your uh, diff? I was thinking about using the A-Track system first, and if that doesn't work, then locking my diff. What do you think? That's a good idea. Give it a shot. So I'm going to let this system do its thing. It's on now. It does not work the way I work. I work with acceleration and a lot of it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I noticed. Can you lock the rear dip without going down? My way works. Acceleration and gobs of it. It just works. And, and a locker, and a locker. The A-Track probably could have figured it out, but I was getting really close to that tree. Yeah, that was a Nathan method. When in doubt, throttle out. <laughs> works. All right, here we go. We're going down uh, Ass Scratcher. This testy approach and of course departure, and the idea is to get through here without scratching your nose or scratching your butt. Gosh. A lot of weight, huh? That's a lot of weight. Interesting weight. It's 5,800 pounds. Woo! Really good um, departure angle, though. Look at that, we haven't touched at all. Wow. That might be the first stock vehicle we've ever taken through there. Yeah, we haven't touched, yeah. And the departure angle, that was unreal. Really, really impressive. You got a high bar there, Nathan, we didn't touch at all. That's because you cheat. It's very simple. I will point this out later. How exactly Roman and Tommy cheated with their Ineos. And down we go. Definitely heading down. A little more, more down, 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 down. Okay. Now, maybe if I try to be a little clever, cut it over a little bit. Ah! 
at the beginning of this episode, we asked a simple question. Is the Ineos Grenadier worth $24,000 more than the uh, Foreigner TRD Pro? What is your answer, Nathan? I would say yes, except for one thing, they cheated. The Micah boys both cheated. You know what they did? They omitted a tow hitch. There's no tow hitch on the back of that Enios as such. When it goes through an obstacle, it doesn't scrape as much as, say, other vehicles. So, with that aside, I will say that the vehicle itself performed admirably and it's really, really, really well put together. Yeah, I mean, look, I think objectively, no, it is not worth $24,000 more. It, I mean, the Foreigner performed just as well. Yeah. But if you want something super unique that you're really not going to see out on the trail, if you want something that's, you know, brand new, um, kind of old school in its design and engineering, then yeah, the Ineos is one of the only options on the road and therefore it's probably worth the 80 grand. So if you guys want to see the next episode where we actually tell you what we love and hate about it, just become a patron member of ours by clicking below. Otherwise, we will see you guys next time. Ciao.